I've got a run of the mill Chevy small block here. I'm in the process of tearing it down for a future project that potentially hopefully is gonna work out. But I thought for us, it'd be fun to test whether the much maligned plastic gauge can hold up in accuracy against traditional engine builders tools. So hang on for that. But first we've got to go on a trip. I've had the opportunity to do a lot of fun, cool projects in the shop. But as you can see, the junk is just starting to pile up. I've got old brakes from brake swaps, pistons from the uh, Enfuego 6.0 project I'm going to be doing for Chevy High Performance, door regulators, exhaust pipes, springs from the lift kit that I did on my Jeep. I've even got a few sets of old wheels stacked up outside and somehow wound up with a pair of Bronco doors from a project that got left behind. So I'm taking it all to the scrapyard. Like the used car salesman says, everything's got to go and I'm going to see if I can earn enough money to buy my lunch today. All right, that's it. Now I'm gonna see if I can earn enough to buy my lunch today. And then right after I got to my assigned spot to throw my steel onto the scrap pile, this guy and his enormous steel picker shows up and starts throwing around some gigantic hooks of iron. I was cool with it until he placed that light pole or whatever it was on top of the pile right near me and I couldn't help but imagine the whole thing coming down on my head. That wasn't too bad. The giant metal picker picking up that giant trailer was really cool, but it also had me a little nervous standing right beside it. But here's our totals. My tickets got a little wet, it's raining on me, but I had 700 and something pounds of steel at six cents a pound, it got me 43 bucks. The, uh, the seven aluminum wheels got me $93. That wasn't too bad at all, it's 53 cents a pound. And the uh, LS1 aluminum cylinder head I threw in there was uh, 12 cents a pound, it got me 288. So the grand total, 140 bucks. Not too shabby. Anyhow, back to work. We are testing to see if good old fashioned plastic gauge can be competitive with legitimate engine builders tools. So what I've got here is a pretty standard Chevy small block. I'm in the process of pulling it down, like I said before, for a project coming up. I just wanted to check out the bottom end, make sure everything was still good. So I thought this would be a great test for the plastic gauge. So we'll be testing green plastic gauge against pretty standard engine builders tools. It's important to note that the green plastic gauge is the finest. It's usually used for checking rod and main bearing clearances and things like that. Its range is from one thousandths to three thousandths. Now, if for some reason that you need it, you can use red plastic gauge. It checks for clearances between two thousandths and six thousandths. And then there's also the blue, which checks for between four thousandths to nine thousandths of an inch. The rod journals on this engine are Chevy standard two inch one hundred thousandths. So we're just using the standard rule of thumb for one one thousandths clearance for every inch of journal size. So that means we're looking for a two and one tenths clearance, right in line with our green plastic gauge. But before we actually get started with our plastic gauge, I do want to make sure I've got accurate clearance measurements for the three test journals we're gonna be using here. So I've got my dial bore gauge and also my outside micrometer that I'll be able to measure. Our three test journals are gonna be for cylinders one, three, and four. And you might be asking, why did you choose those? No reason, it's just random. Those are just the ones I pulled the uh, rods and pistons for. Now I've already cleaned off any oil from the journals just to make sure the oil doesn't throw off my measurements. Now step one will be to use my micrometer to measure the diameter of the journal. Make sure you stay away from the oiling holes on the crank because that's going to throw off your measurements. 
Now I'll lock that down. With that set up, now I can zero out my dial bore gauge. I'll just set it up in the mic right there and then hold it steady and zero out the gauge. There, that's good. The measurement that I took was the journal for cylinder number one. So now I've got the rod and piston set up and that's the one that came out of that hole. Now you can set up and measure your rods on the table. I just find this more accurate for me the way I do it, set up in a rod vise like this. Now I've already checked rod bolt stretch and I know that 53 foot pounds of torque we're using uh, ARP Ultra Lube will get me seven and a half thousandths of stretch on the bolts. So I know I'm good here and I'm ready to measure the big end of the rod with the bearing installed. Make sure it's clean with no wool. Now with all that done, I'm finally ready to take my measurements. Now this doesn't actually tell me the size of the ID of the bearing. What it tells me is my clearance. Now this dial indicator is accurate to a half of a thousandth of an inch. That's 0 .0005. Each small tick mark is half of a thousandth. So each large tick mark is a thousandth. So as you can see right here, I've got 2.2 thousandths of an inch of clearance. Dead on where I need to be. So I'll put 2.2 thousandths in my notebook for journal number one, and then I will continue the process for subjects number three and four. So now I've got my clearances measured on all my journals and now we can actually go in and test to see how accurate the plastic gauge is. So now to test to see how the plastic gauge works, we actually have to reinstall the piston back on the crankshaft. Now that's because plastic gauge works by using this little tiny sliver of plastic and you place it in between the, the bearing on the big end of the rod and the crankshaft rod journal and tighten it down and however much it smooshes out shows us how much clearance that we've got. Now with the piston in place, we can roll the engine back over. Now we can lay the plastic gauge material on there. This is the plastic gauge itself. It's just a thin thread of plastic. So we'll just cut off a small strip and lay it right across the journal here. And torque it into place to get the full crush. Now turn around and pull the rod caps right back off again. And let's see what we got. So we can tell the thickness by measuring the width of our plastic gauge against the scales that are printed on the, uh, the wrapper. Now be careful, now one side has, let's see if we can turn it so you can see it, has a scale in thousandths of an inch, and the other side has a scale in millimeters. That's that European stuff I don't even understand. So we'll stick with the thousandths of an inch. And you can see here, if we measure it with uh, one and a half thousandths, that one is definitely not as wide as that. So let's bring it over here to the two thousandths looks pretty close. It's definitely wider than the three thousandths of an inch. Now we measured with our tools at two thousandths, two tenths. So it should be in between here and here, but it actually looks a little wider than the two thousandths. I'll clean this off and we'll check our other journal. We're going to try both rod caps at the same time this time. Now you can't spin the crank over with the plastic gauge in place. So you've got to go ahead and have it on, in place ahead of time. So now I'll put these caps on and we'll see what we get. So now we've got two more test subjects. We've got cylinder number three and cylinder number four. Let me turn this the right way. And again for number three, it's really close to two thousandths, a little bit wider than that. So it says it's a little under two thousandths when really it's two thousandths one tenth. And number four is two thousandths two tenths again. 
and again it's saying it's right at about just a little wider than 2000 so still on the wrong side close but no cigar and also make sure that whenever you use plastic gauge it is room temperature sometime somewhere between 65 and, and 75 degrees because that helps accuracy you know i've always wanted to try plastic gauge but never have so this little test was informative for me and i hope it was for you too what i learned was that plastic gauge will get you close but it's certainly not as precise as real deal engine builders tools. Now, I'll put links to tools like these that I use uh, in the description below. If you want to, you can check them out yourself. Um, make sure that you use these in room temperature like I mentioned before. And one thing that I noticed is that this stuff is a pain to clean off. It doesn't just wipe right back off. So usually when you're gonna use something like plastic gauge is when your cranking rods are clean and ready for pre-fit. But now you gotta turn around and scrub all this stuff back off again and make sure you don't mar the surface or anything. So that's kind of a pain. But this is interesting to know. Use plastic gauge if you don't have any other options, but if you possibly can, use good engine builder's tools. It just gets you that much closer to a perfect build. Thanks for watching.